Welcome to Square Root in Python. My name is Chris, and I will be your guide. In this course, you will learn what are square roots, powers, and nth roots, how to get a square root in Python, how square roots are calculated, and using square roots in practice. A quick note on versions, all code in this course was tested with Python 3.9. Square root has been around since the beginning, so most things will work in most versions, and I'll do my best to point out differences as I go along. A square is any number multiplied by itself. A square root is a number that, when multiplied by itself, gives the square. 5 squared is 25, so the square root of 25 is 5. The knowledge of square roots has been around for thousands of years. There are Babylonian clay tablets dating from 1800 BCE that reference this concept. Python provides a method for calculating square roots as part of the math library. Next up, I'll show you some square roots and how to find them in code. In the previous lesson, I gave an overview of the course. In this lesson, I'll introduce you to square roots in Python. A square is a number that is multiplied by itself. There are many ways of expressing this in math and programming. The big cross here indicates multiplication. In most programming languages, the star is used for the same thing. In algebra, the superscript of 2 means to square the value. Some programming languages use the caret symbol, or shift 6 on a US keyboard, to denote exponents. An exponent or power of 2 is the same as squaring. In Python, double star is the power operator. Star star 2 is the same as square. A square root is the number that when squared gives you the question. If y is equal to x squared, given y, what would x be? This is also noted as the square root of y. The little check mark here means to take the square root of what is under it. This symbol, the check mark, is called the radical sign, the radical symbol, the root symbol, the radix, or the surd. Here's an example. 5 times 5 is 25, so the square root of 25 is 5. Let me start by using the power operator to square the number 3. 3 times 3 is 9, all good. Let me do it once more with 5. 5 squared is 25. Now, to get the square root, I need to get the function that does this from the math library. The square root of 25 is 5. 6 squared is 36, so the square root of 36 is 6. So far, I've only used integers and what are called perfect squares. When you square an integer, the result is a perfect square. When you square root a perfect square, you get back that integer. If you square root a number that isn't a perfect square, you'll get an irrational number. In Python, these are represented by floats. Seeing as I've done square root for 25 and 36, you could guess that the square root of 30 is going to be somewhere between 5 and 6. Let's see that. And there you go, 5.47, etc. You can see how well this worked by storing it and then squaring the result. Back to 30. That worked out well. The square root of 0 is 0. If you think about it for a moment, that makes sense. 0 times 0 is 0, so the thing you multiply by itself to get 0 is 0. Feels kind of zen. You're not likely to need this directly, but if you're doing math on a variable and it happens to contain zero, then you know what result to expect. What about negatives? Python doesn't allow this. The square root of a negative number is what's called a complex number. Python has a method for dealing with complex numbers, but you have to explicitly request that it does so. As I'm just using the vanilla square root here, I get a value error instead. In addition to the square root function, Python 3.8 introduced the i square root function in the math module. Now that I've imported it, let me run it on 25. No problem here, still in perfect square land. Same thing with 36. 
And using it on 30 might give you a guess as to what the I part in I square root stands for. This returns the floor of the square root, giving the integer result. In addition to squares, you can also cube something. That's a number multiplied by itself and then by itself again. Same notations as before, but this time with a 3 instead of a 2. The generalization of this is called the power of a number. x to the nth power is x times x times x n times. Working that backwards, and you get the nth root. If y is x to the n, then what is x? To indicate that a root is an nth root, the n value gets tagged into the front of that root symbol. Here's an example. 4 cubed is 64. So the third root, or cube root, of 64 is 4. Python does not have an nth root function, but that isn't a problem because of this neat little math trick. The nth root of something is the same as the value to the power of 1 over n. For instance, the cube root of y is equivalent to y to the power of 1 third, or 1 over 3. Let's go back to the REPL and use this. Repeating the previous example in the REPL, 4 cubed is 64. You can also use the built-in power function to achieve the same thing. Or you can use the power function from the math module. Notice the difference. The one in the math module always returns a float. Now let's use that fraction trick. 25 to the power of 1 over 2, that's a half, is 5. See? Square root. Notice that I wrote one dot inside of the exponent. That is to force Python to treat that number as a float. Now let's use the fractional power to cube root 64. And that's pretty close, but not quite right. This has nothing to do with the formula for the cube root. It has to do with how float numbers are stored in a computer. You'll find a lot of float numbers do weird things when division and fractions are involved. You'll get little pieces missing. You have to be particularly careful with this when doing a lot of math, as the errors can compound over multiple uses. A little error at the beginning fed into another formula can make you a fair ways off at the end. That's just the hazards of doing math with floats. For completion's sake, let me just show you the power function from the math library to do the same thing. Not surprisingly, you get the same result. Next up, how computers calculate these roots. 